Thank you, Maddie. My name is Albert, and I'm Lisa. Um, we are a part of actually a collective of four people. The other two couldn't make it today, but um, we work in architecture, structure engineering, and in the arts realm. Uh, myself, I'm an artist, architect in New York City, and uh, I love uh, making things and fabricating things, and also thinking through material transformations and um, in that, we, with part of this project, thought about waste in different ways. So this is actually scrap material from a furniture making company that so generously donated this uh, material to us. And we, along this process, turned it into something a little bit more interesting. But the whole idea is to um, be very specific about when to take, go in and disrupt the whole like dumping and trashing of materials and transform it into something else. So actually, yeah, it's a funny story because the name of the project is Two Blue Shells and originally we were planning for it to be blue but when we made contact with this furniture company, they had all this hot pink scrap that was gonna just be thrown away and they weren't ever gonna use it because they had extra from a project. So uh, that's why you can see that now it's hot pink. Um, Hot pink was a very like high demand uh, color at that time. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so the process for making the piece is that we connect all these small pieces of scrap together into one large sheet, which you can see in the little connections on the piece. And then acrylic is this amazing material because it can, when it heats up to a certain temperature, it becomes softer and uh, can be made to make a lot of different shapes. But then um, once it cools, it can harden and keep the shape that it uh, maintained when it was when it was warm. So what we actually did was hang up this huge sheet in a giant oven in Long Island City that's normally used for powder coating. It's an industrial process. And we hung the flat sheet in the oven and let it sag and deform under its own weight into this curvaceous... Uh, spatial shell, and then once it cooled and hardened, um, this is the this is the sh shape it took. So it's actually like a architectural process of trying to use the material to find like the perfect shape um, for the structure. Um, part of it is also this is not a a process that is like completely brand new. Other structure engineers and architects have used this process to find. Doubly, to explore doubly curved structures. However, um, in all our research, they have not gone to this scale. So they've always like kept it small, and then uh, you know went bigger with concrete or some other materials. So this was the chance to really explore the material limitations, um, which we did explore a little bit um, earlier this week. We actually had two shells, but um, because of the challenges, we only have one now, but, um, and part of it's just like just exploring the limitations, and uh, this was originally for a symposium in, um, in Barcelona, and so part of the challenge was to be able to pack it all, so that's why we have everything discretized and like broken down into smaller pieces and things like that. And I think one of the things that we're super excited about, aside from you know being able to ship it, exploring these new construction materials and methods, and also using scrap material in a different way, is just the effect of the curved plastic in space. So like reflections that are cast on the wall, or um, just shadows, and potentially how it deals with sound and light. Um, so that's something that we're continuing to also explore in further projects and something that we were really excited to be able to share with the public. One thing with La Mama was also that, I don't know if you can capture like the background over here with the shadows, but like um, Filippo had done such a great job, and team, had done such a great job like um, animating some of these lights that would over time change so like this shadow you see on the wall will eventually go away and then some at some point like the light will come from this direction and it happens over time and I think we had always kind of imagined that 
eventually one day just being like an outdoor installation where you can see light cast through and move in different ways and like just create um, just through lighting effects something magical and different reflections, different ocular um, effects that it, cr it would create. Um, that was something that was really exciting. And I think once we saw this shadow, that w like um, reinforced the or like harkened back to like the initial like uh, approaches that we were interested in. So. Yeah, and I think we were just also so excited to have this opportunity to be part of Refest and see it in company with all these amazing other artworks and artists. And it's just, I mean, I think it's phenomenal. Sometimes we'll see, you know, these amazing dance pieces and see the shells in the background. And that's something that we had always imagined is like, how can this be part of a larger community? Um, so we really love that this event is taking place. Oh, sure. <laughs> Um, so I'm Lisa, I'm an architecture student, a graduate student at Princeton University, and I just started, actually, this is my first year, and um, so, yeah, eventually I'll be <laughs> an architect. She also has a background in architecture, <laughs> and had worked with, um, at a structural engineering company before. Yeah, so the, I worked in an engineering company before with one of our other teammates, Pal Draper, and the company is Schleich Bergman Partner. And they're a really amazing structural engineering firm who does a lot of experimental design with lightweight structures. Um, and I think part of that experience is what got me excited about finding these new um, construction methods and fabrication methods and just getting excited about material transformation. Um, and I am Albert Chow. I <laughs> work in architecture now in the city, um, trying to build buildings. It takes a while, but um, I also have a background in sculpture and, um, and installations and performances, but uh, after my undergraduate studies, I went back to school for architecture. And my whole idea of going back to architect or going to architecture was thinking that I would never want to build buildings. And the idea is, as opposed to building buildings, you build experiences and like performances, performances that people move through different spaces. Um, in doing that, I think I had a really strong background in un wanting to explore materials. But uh, as I was exploring it, I was also thinking, exposed to more digital craft, um, how to blend the digital with the real. And uh, I was a student at Buffalo, University of Buffalo. Um, and now I'm in New York um, working in architecture and also building installations and tinkering, so. And our other, our other teammates, we should say, Pal Draper, we already mentioned, is an amazing structural engineer at Schleich Bergerman Partner. And our other uh, colleague and um, partner on this endeavor is Edward Siegel, who's a, a professor of engineering at Hofstra University, and he's like, at the university, they're pioneering a lot of coursework for engineers about design and exploration um, like these. So it's amazing to have such a great team on this project. Thank you. Thank you, guys.